Oh, it's very exciting. I think you know each year has puts a different spin on it, but we're, we've got some nice horses to go to war with this year and some nice two-year-olds who've turned three, obviously, and um, no, the spring's very exciting. I think we're always trying to evolve and trying to change the type of horse that we train and obviously elevate the quality of horse that we're training. And um, you know, we've got a lot more horses who are trying to be laid out for, for the bigger meetings. And I think you know, that's, where, that's where everyone wants to be. But you know, we had winners at Newmarket, at Ascot, at Goodwood. You know, we, we did have winners all through the year and, and we want to try and do that again this year. But it takes, it takes a bit of planning. So I think we might have had a slightly slower start but intentionally, you know, we, we, went, we went to Dubai and that was a success and, and we ran less horses on the all weather. And, um, but no, we're, we're looking forward to it. And you obviously enjoyed a uh, successful period out in Dubai, particularly with Al Dasim. Yeah, Al Dasim, he, he sort of exceeded our expectations. And I think when the list of horses came out for the pool that he was going to be running against, we were, we were pretty hopeful that he'd show up well. And, he travelled out there good and, and obviously showed a liking for fast ground and a straight track and yeah I didn't think he'd get to where he did and obviously a little disappointing but I think for a horse who hadn't even turned three yet to, to only get beat three lengths in the Alquaz was you know a huge credit to him. And what's the plan with him for, for this season? I think the main target, mid-season target, has to be the Commonwealth Cup. Um, he could go to the Sandy Lane at Haydock on the 21st of May but we'll see he's back in full work at, at the moment you know he's cantering away and um, had a nice break when he got back. He went straight out to the paddock and um, he looked super. So, yeah, he's a horse that Ascot's got to be his main target. And one that didn't quite go to plan was was missed the cut on the day. It, it all seemed to, to go wrong for him. Look, he was frustrating and he's now headed on to, to warmer shores and um, we wish him you know, the absolute best of luck. He was, a, he was one of our first Royal Ascot winners and, you know, very imposing physical and um, give us, given us some great days. And, and I think, you know, Obviously, the partnership remains with their Babington and Lane's End stud. And yeah, I, I look forward to seeing him running out there. And he showed a real liking for that dirt when we took him to Saudi. And, you know, possibly in a, in a, different, in a different world, he might, have, he might have run on dirt for us. But um, no, no, we wish him the best of luck and um, what a horse he was. And now looking ahead to, to this season and, and all the exciting new runners that you've, you've got. Um, first of all, we've got the two fillies, Queen Ollie and Believing. Yeah, Queen Ollie's um, obviously a, a new addition to the yard, and a filly who, you know, has been training well through the through the spring. She's she's nearly there in her coat, and um, we're looking forward to stepping her back up to seven furlongs. She you know, she was she was second at Newmarket at the back end of last year, and, and I think you know back up to seven furlongs it just might allow her to travel a bit better. And you know, she, her work's been her work's been pleasing, and um, we're looking forward to seeing her. And believing she was a filly who possibly was a little immature after the breeze and one of made them well having missed the kit very badly and, and she just seems a more you know more mature mental prospect this year you know she she's had a wind off over the winter and um, I just hope that, that might allow her to, to relax in her races a bit better and she's she's buying Memas out of a Kodiak mare and she may well come back to sprinting but she holds a holds an entry in the guineas and, and we've got to try her in a, either a Fred Darling or an Nell Gwynn and she looked better at Newmarket than she did at, at Newbury, so that's the way that we're going to go. Perfect. And then also this week, um, another Amma racing horse, Radaborg. Yeah, Radaborg's a, a nice addition to the yard. We gelded him when he arrived, and um, he's, he's nearly there. He's probably improved for the run, um, very big horse, and um, he does look a bit lighter now, having been gelded. So look, he, was, he was beaten five and three quarter lengths, I think, in, in the champion mile at, at Ascot at the end of last year. And, I think he should like the soft ground this week, so he comes here in good shape. And beautiful as always, looks like she'll make her debut for you. Yeah, beautiful as always, nice filly. Um, Kingman, unraced filly who has, you know, she hasn't done any serious work yet. Nice to get on the track. She's got obviously got a very good pedigree and um, one who I expect might get a little bit further. Um, but, you know, super nature and, and a filly who, you know, we like at home. And totally charming, ran a pretty good race in, on pretty soft ground. I know he likes that ground but up in, uh, over in Ireland. How's he come out of that race? Totally charming. He's, he's a horse who, you know, one to really look forward to this year, I think, in those big handicaps. And the work back from, you know, he's a Victoria Cup, Buckingham Palace type of horse. Um, so his next target is the Victoria Cup. I, I think, you know, he was a good winner at Doncaster at the back end of last year and just didn't quite see out the sort of stiff mile at the Curra and possibly hit the front too soon and um, yeah he, he'd be he'd be a bit of fun over seven furlongs going forward. Um, and Cadillac 
he's been gelded since the winter. The chance he could start in the Suffolk Stakes at the Guineas meeting here at Newmarket, and he was a very good second behind an impressive winner of Saibin Saroas at um, in the Wolferton last year, and that's been his aim for a long time. I think you know he's now a gelding and um, one who's shown a liking for the track. So we'd be mad not to sort of program around that rest, that sort of race. Last year's 1,000 Guineas heroine Cache. We haven't seen her since since the uh, summer last year. How's she been? Cache has been great. Um, she missed quite a lot of work at the back end of last year and obviously had a very busy time. She was now win two guineas, Royal Ascot, and um, you know with a filly of that quality and you know they deserve the time and, and it's great for Highclere to have a classic winner going on as a four-year-old this year and um, her target has been the chart well for some time and, and we'll try and get her there and but I think you know the the fillies race is really starting earnest after Ascot so we're in no immediate rush with her but we'd love to get her to Lingfield um, with this wet spring we hope we might get a bit of bit of better ground coming forward and um, yeah she's she's been training good and lots to look forward to and she obviously she obviously won a guineas over a mile but the sort of suspicion is that she the sort of seven furlongs perhaps even six furlongs could also play to her strengths I think so look she she was um, obviously on fumes in the guineas at the end having having made the gallop which few have done and um, I look forward to seeing her back in trip I think it's possibly a little bit more of it's been made because I said I didn't want to go up in trip, but she was never going to go up in trip. So um, it could be a nice starting point for over seven, and she's likely to have entries in races like the Morris de Geese and the um, Six Column Race at Royal Ascot. And it, yeah, I think it just opens up more options for her. Fia Sestina won a, won a Group 3 over in France. How's she been? What's the plan with her? Fia Sestina, nice filly who um, obviously was a good winner at, down in the south of France, sort of on her last start for us uh, back in the last year. and. Um, she's come back bigger and stronger as a five-year-old this time and her work's been good you know she's stepped forward again and um, she could go to the Dahlia she's also entered in the Middleton at York and I'd be favouring Newmarket her her handicap win and then her group three place there were you know, two of her better figures on the track so um, yeah she's she's an exciting filly for the year and all the King's men all the King's men slightly sort of fluffed his lines a little bit the other day, he was drawn wide and, and we had to sort of take back and obviously beaten by a very good horse by uh, Clive Cox's and he's a horse who I, I kind of since he won at Lingfield, the Buckingham Palace has been his plan and um, I think a straight track will allow him just to, to get into the race a bit easier and um, he's got a little way to go but he, he reminds me of a horse like Imber Park from last year who we might be getting there at pretty late but i um, going to try and sneak in off the bottom. Exciting. And uh, when we were here this time last year, I think the two-year-old you put up was P- Pastiche. Um, how's, how's she doing? Yeah, Pastiche doing good. She's, um, she's quite f- far forward in her prep now. She's, she's nearly ready to, to run and the uh, plan is to go to Lingfield on the 24th for a Phillies novice. Um, she's wintered good and I think, you know, Zoostar is starting to warm up and obviously, you know, a Group 1 winner at the back end of last year and he himself was, was a late maturer and... Um, She's a very good-looking filly. She's she's strengthened up over the winter, and we'll see where we go. But the Sandringham is has been a plan for a while. Um, she's on for a for a mark, which should nearly get her in. So um, no, but her work's pretty pretty pleasing. And Marmara Star was just touched off on on Saturday. What's the plan with her? Yeah, Marmara Star was um, possibly a little bit shorter work. It's a long year. Um, she's a filly that you know the racing league has been a plan for a while for her, and I think we need to get her on turf. Really, she she just she was a bit numb around Wolverhampton the other day and ended up in front and was there to be shot at. And she's a she's a progressive filly who, who I think we'll see her back in the winners' enclosure soon. And Baradar ran such a tremendous race in the, in the Lincoln, just bumping into clearly a very a very good horse um, in migration. How's he? Yeah, Baradar is doing great. Um, it's quite like totally charming. He they were in the two Lincolns and I think they're both weak stayers at the mile on soft ground. They both want soft ground, but. He, he also will come back for the Victoria Cup and you know Buckingham Palace has to be sort of his main target. He he does want to get his toe in, so you know he'll probably have a declaration and, and we'll make a decision on the day, but he's certainly better with a bit of ease in the ground. And Novation? Novation, nice two-year-old um, Havana Gray brother to, to Novello, who has been showing up well. He's a big, strong horse, bigger, bigger type. Probably take a little bit more time than his brother. Um, 
but yeah, lovely horse, Simon Manier and Isaac Swade owned, and um, it'd be nice to have a good one for them. And Perdika had a pretty busy, busy, busy winter. What's the plan with with Perdika? Perdika, uh, she was a little disappointing in the in the final at, at um, Newcastle, but I think in in all honesty, she probably ran closer to her mark that she was before she went to Shanti. Um, fantastic for Sally Nichols to to breed a listed winner and. She'll go home to the to the farm at the end of this year, more than likely. But um, she's going to be busy. She's in the Lansdowne, showed liking for soft ground, both in Dubai and and here. So um, yeah, very pleased with her. She she looks super and could could be a busy one this summer. Naxos um, was obviously impressive at Newcastle the other day. Very pleased with him. Um, he's got the pedigree to improve as he gets up to ten furlongs. And um, being by Saxon Warrior, you'd imagine as a three-year-old, we'll we'll see him come into his own. But um, he's done very little wrong at the moment and um, one that possibly we could work back from the Golden Gates handicap at Royal Ascot. And Simply Sondheim was a was a revelation last year. Um, could we see similar scenes this year with him? Simply Sondheim was, he, he, he took me a bit by surprise. I I didn't expect him to improve as much as he did. He He's not a flashy workhorse at all and you know works considerably below his current mark and probably saves it for the track. I. I, I hoped he'd run well on his return, and, and, and he certainly did. He won sort of cosily in the end, and the Duke of Edinburgh has been a bit of a lofty plan for him for a while, but he's, his mark is getting up towards that sort of low 90s, and um, he could well run at Chelmsford this week, and, and if, should he win, he may be put away to Alaska. A two-year-old that caught the eye on the gallops this morning was Soprano, very striking chestnut filly. What, what's she like? Yeah, Soprano's been doing super. Um, big filly, rangy filly, who... I didn't really expect to be working in the early spring and, and you know she's she's showing plenty at home at the moment by Star Spangled Banner, um, owned by High Clear and, and one to look forward to. I I was speaking to Harry the other day and there's a plan possibly to go to the, the Phillies race on um Thousand Guineas Day at Newmarket and she seems to handle the dip pretty well and it'd be great for them to to have another filly that we can go to war with. And a horse that was that chased home missed the cut in the Golden Gates last year, Sun King. He is now in your care. Tell us about him. Yeah, Sun King, we bought him sort of halfway through the summer last year and he was a horse for opulent thoroughbreds who, you know, we want to try and turn up at the big occasions and he's still got a bit of legwork to get into a Duke of Edinburgh but um, he's been training good. Um, he ran well at Kempton and we uh, haven't really had the right race for him. He didn't get in the Rosebury and um, yeah, we'll see him on the track pretty soon. He's he's fit and ready to go, and yeah, lovely horse by Galileo, who who's likely to stay the mile and a half. Two more that we cover: Conquistador. Yeah, Conquistador is a um, Hurlworth Bloodstock purchase at the back end of last year, and has been a revelation since gelding and dropping back in trip. I, he's going to be laid out for the five furlong three year old handicap at Ascot, and on recent runnings of the race, he looks like he should get in and. Um, I think the stiff five there is, is just what he needs. So, yeah, he's an exciting horse and the same ownership as Inver Park, who, who was a winner at Ascot last year. So the excitement is building for them. Uh, military medal, nice colt by Suyuni, um, who's showing up nicely at home. He's, he's a big, strong horse who, who's just come back from a bit of a break and, and thrive for that. So um, he's a horse who I imagine we'll see in the sort of seven furlong races when they start, but um, very imposing horse and, and his work looks pretty good. An exciting bunch of horses, and and just as a trainer, t- tell us about what it's like at this time of year. And it, like, do you, are you thriving? Are you bouncing out of bed in the mornings? Yeah, it's, I think you know if you're not at this time of the year, then you know probably in the wrong game. But um, no, we've we've got a, a nice number of horses to go to war with, and you know not a huge amount more than last year. We were we were pretty clinical at moving on horses who'd done their job or, or weren't up to it, and you know we'll try to remain that way and. But no, we've got some, some lovely horses to look forward to and um, we'll be keep trying to find the next one. And if I were to push you for a two-year-old, a three-year-old, an older horse to, to, to follow for this season, who would you have? I think the two-year-old at the moment would be Soprano. Um, she's a, obviously a very striking filly that we saw this morning and she's still on the weak side and to be doing what she's doing at the moment is, is very pleasing. Um, look forward to seeing her on the track pretty soon. Aldassin probably has to be the star of the show having seen what we saw in Dubai and you know he's tailor-made for fast ground this summer um dropping back against his own age I think is is going to be a real key you know he was his birthday only last week so he's he's only a he's not a fully mature horse taking on those older horses so look forward to seeing him against his own age um and Via Sestina would probably be the the older horse outside of Cachet to you know that we don't really know about yet and um 
she's done very well physically and she'll have all the right entries and um, hopefully we can take a big one out with her.